Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops 3 In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the HBK-30 Assault Rifle. This was one of my favorites in the Private Alpha, and it was one of my favorites in the Beta. However, some things have changed for the final version, and there are some surprising facts about this weapon, which I guarantee you, you don't know that we'll be talking about today on In-Depth. But first, I need to talk about something a little more personal to me. I recently crossed 1 million YouTube subscribers. This was a massive milestone for me, and most of you subscribe to watch the In-Depth series. So most of these 1 million subscribers subscribe to me to watch in depth so I just wanted to say thank you to all of you that have supported in depth and the things I've done on my channel for a very long time and I wanted you to be able to click this annotation to go to my 1 million subscribers mega giveaway video mostly because the giveaway sites that I linked to yesterday had so many people entering that they went down they just went down from traffic it looked like a DDoS attack so if you didn't get to enter into the mega giveaway I'm giving away like two PlayStation 4s a Juggernaug edition scuff controllers Elgato's Astro's Net Dumas literally everything you can go ahead and do that because the giveaway sites are now back online. The traffic is a little bit more normal. And again, thank you all for supporting me and for this series and general knowledge and depth in gaming. But let's talk about the HBK-30. It'll deal 30 damage up close, hence HBK-30, and decrease down to 22 at a distance, which is average slash low for assault rifles. I would say that this is low for assault rifles in general for Call of Duty games. If I were looking at like Call of Duty as a whole, this would be a low damage assault rifle. For Black Ops 3, it's a little bit more average because ARs and Black Black Ops 3, there's not a lot of actual average damage ARs. They tend to be very high damage or relatively low damage. Because this is on the low side and there's a lot of low damage assault rifles in this game, it's average for Black Ops 3. What this means is that it will kill in either four or five shots, depending on your range, so it's very consistent in that regard, which is a good thing. It gives it a good feeling, but it's usually going to be a four-shot kill. Very rarely are you going to need five shots, and that's because the distance on the four-shot kill range is very impressive all the way out at 38 meters. To put this in perspective, that is the exact same distance as the XR2 one burst range, the M8A7 one burst range, or the Man of War three shot kill range. Very, very long range. Not too many engagements are going to be beyond that, but even if they are, it only takes one more shot. And I would like to point out that the long barrel makes this ridiculous. The long barrel will take this all the way out to 70 plus meters four shot kill range. Long barrel is a fantastic attachment on this weapon. It does a ton of good work, and I would highly recommend you use it. I'm using it in most of the games plays that you see here. Headshot multiplier is 1.1x. This is only useful after 38 meters. It doesn't do you any good up close, any good at medium range. The 1.1x headshot multiplier only means one less shot to kill at long range. So going for long range headshots is totally worth it. For close range headshots, absolutely not worth it. But all things considered, it's fairly easy to get headshots with its vertical recoil. The HBK-30's recoil is mostly vertical. It doesn't side to side too much. And if you aim for like chest or neck up, it's very easy to just let it kick up and get headshots. We'll talk about that more in depth a little bit later. The rate of fire is 720 rounds per minute, which is moderate to fast. I would say that's a little bit normal for submachine guns. And um, I, would, I would normally say that's a normal rate of fire for assault rifles, like in any other Call of Duty game but ARs and Black Ops 3 have a tendency to fire a little bit slow, and it fires a little bit faster than most of the other assault rifles in Black Ops 3, but that's a very familiar rate of fire. That's the same thing as the MSMC, same thing as the CUDA. You should all be very, very familiar with it. And all of this damage, all of this range, what all this translates to is a mediocre up close and medium range time to kill. Because it's four shots and it's not a ton of damage and the rate of fire is okay but not great, the time to kill up close is very mediocre. It's not really that that awesome. However, it has a surprisingly fast long range time to kill, and this is very unusual because the game code refers to this as the close quarters combat assault rifle. I think that's just because of the rate of fire. However, there is a sneaky hidden statistic that not many people would know about that does make it much better for close quarters combat, and that's the fact that the HBK-30 has about a 10% faster sprint in and out time than any of the other assault rifles. So the time that it takes you go to go from sprinting to shooting is faster with the HVK than it is with anything else, and the same kind of thing to go from shooting to back into sprinting, which will allow you to bob in and out of fights and react faster and kill people faster than you can with some of the assault rifles, and I think that's why it was designed to be the close quarters of combat assault rifle. This is very effective when stacked with quick draw and fast hands. Quick draw allows you to aim down sights faster, and fast hands allows you 
to recover from sprinting faster. So you can actually recover faster from sprinting and shoot people on submachine gun kind of like level. And you can really surprise people with this. I This was the surprising fact. That's why it's considered a close quarters combat assault rifle. But I do think that it's just a little bit better for long range combat because of the slower time to kill up close. Magazine size is 30. Extended mags is 42. Nothing too standard about that except for the fact that you'll burn through it all pretty quickly with four shots to kill. It has surprisingly good iron sights. These are not the type of iron sights that I gravitate toward, but I didn't find difficulty using them, and I found them actually okay to work at long ranges. I know it's subjective, but it works for me. However, optics are infinitely easier. At the end of the day, this weapon just performs better with optics, and it is much easier to run optics on the HBK-30 than it is to use the iron sights. And I would say the recoil is not as low as you think. I considered this the low recoil assault rifle for Black Ops 3. I was wrong. Turns out that's the ICR. But it's mostly vertical recoil, meaning it's precise. Precise means predictable. It does the same thing over and over. You can very easily correct for this recoil. You can very easily control for this recoil or let it work for you. It doesn't have a lot of side to side wobble, just mostly vertical. So I have really no issue with it. I think it's pretty good in my opinion, even though it may not be the most accurate assault rifle. It has standard assault rifle hip fire spread, but because of that close quarters combat and that faster sprint out, it's not bad hip fire with a laser. You can kind of get it out a little bit faster than you think. So maybe an okay strategy. I didn't have the best time with it, but maybe you'll do a little bit better than me. Movement speed is assault rifle standard and 95%, a little slower than SMGs. Nothing too special there. Aim down sights time is 250 milliseconds, which is average for the assault rifle class. I was expecting with that faster sprint out time that this would be faster. Unfortunately, it was not. It's pretty average. I guess that would be way OP if it, if it weren't. And I'm just going to go ahead and toss this random fact out there. Stock is highly preferred, especially if you're going to do the close quarters combat thing with that faster in and out of sprinting and quick draw and all that. Stock allows a lot of extra mobility on this weapon. It allows you to corner check faster, a lot of nice things. And I found that just purely for handling purposes, stock is very good on the HVK 30. Reload time is 2.03 seconds. It's fast. It is like if, if it were two seconds flat instead of 0.03, it would be tied for fastest in the class. So it does reload very fast. You shouldn't have no need for fast mags or anything like that. Medium wall penetration factor, same as the other assault rifles. So it's relatively easy to wall bang with them. Maybe up close, maybe at long range, the damage is a little bit too low to go wall banging with. It won't hit people too hard on the other side, but up close, it's very, very easy. Now it's time for the subjective part of the in-depth episode where I get to talk about my opinion of this weapon and recommend some classes. This weapon very strongly reminds me of the Modern Warfare 2 ACR. If you can think back in time to Modern Warfare 2, the ACR was an assault rifle that had very low damage, a kind of mediocre rate of fire, but its recoil was very easy to deal with. It actually had less recoil than this, this kicks more, but it was very easy to deal with, very functional with a dot sight, and you could just use that to punish people at long range. It was the full auto assault rifle of choice for that game, and personally for Black Ops 3, I feel this is my full auto assault rifle of choice, and it reminds me of the ACR. The game code literally refers to this as close quarters combat assault rifle. I don't, I kind of know why it's for designed for close range with that faster sprint out and in and out time, but I strongly prefer it at medium to long range. The fact that it doesn't change the shots to kill too much for long range and that the recoil is predictable and it's got a decent rate of fire and the range is just pretty bananas on it anyway, I think it's a very strong contender for being a good long range assault rifle and those are the ranges that I prefer to use it at. Overall, the HBK-30 is a good weapon. I don't want you to come away from this in-depth episode thinking it's a bad weapon because that's definitely not true. However, it is not an amazing weapon. This isn't going to replace the M8A7 as being the top dog assault rifle. This isn't a god tier weapon. This isn't an OP weapon. This isn't like the weapon you've been waiting for, dreaming of, that's going to come and save your kill death, kill death ratio. But it is good. It's definitely worth using. It's worth picking up. It's not a, a weapon you want to discard or take lightly in any kind of fashion. Let's talk about the recommended classes. And you can do this two different ways. Way number one is kind of how Treyarch wants you to use it as a close quarters combat assault rifle, and I recommend running it with fast hands. I don't recommend perks too often, but you can go in just straight with fast hands. You get that even faster recovery from sprinting. Quick draw and stock. Use this as your close quarters rough and tumble spray and pray. Use in stock, fast reaction, quick draw kind of uh, assault rifle, and it works okay at that. I don't think it's the best at that. I don't think it's awesome at that, but it does work okay in this regard. If you run this class, you won't have too hard of a time, and you definitely can make it work for you. However, I think the class that you'll like better 
better and what did work for me is when you use this as a long range assault rifle. It might feel like it's shooting pellets a little bit, but with long barrel you won't have a problem. So of course we're going to recommend running long barrel. Optics of choice. I found the Varex sight to be surprisingly useful at this. I don't know why I gravitated toward that one, but I did. It doesn't really matter, just whatever optics you want and a foregrip. Foregrip will help cut the recoil a little bit and make it much more effective at long ranges. And I think this class number two you will find to be much, much more beneficial to you. And that's the one that I would overall recommend. And guys, that is all for this in-depth episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on high caliber. And the next episode, if I finish it in time, will be on the top five specialists. Drifter out.